remind everybody that we are recording. So if you are uncomfortable with that, you can uh, get off or you can just change your video to be off. <laughs> Today we're jumping into opportunities, assessments, and uh, brainstorming. And I'm going to take that uh, slide actually to the next one, Alyssa, to say the reason we're talking about this is because we are still forming as a Midwest cast. We are um, relatively new compared to our other casts across the nation. Just in um, September 2021, the University of Minnesota Twin Cities Institute on the Environment was identified as our host. And we have a consortium with those institutions here. University of Wisconsin-Madison, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, Indiana University, Nature Conservancy, Michigan State University, College of Menominee Nation, Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission, Commission and the University of Minnesota Duluth campus. And so we are excited um, to be having these monthly opportunities to get together and get to know each other. And uh, today's seminar is going to include a few key components of what we're going to be together in this community. So I think that's on the next slide, Alyssa, is kind of our rundown. Yeah. So I'm first going to start us off with an overview of this year's project solicitation. Um, I can't hear you clapping, but I know everybody is because this is our first as the Midwest cast with University of Minnesota hosts our first project solicitation. So we're very excited. Um, and we're also going to have Sarah Stickney talk about our technical assessment that recently launched Focus on the Midwest cast. Um, and Jessica Hellman's uh, the PI on that. We will be looking for um, opportunities to engage with that. And then the second half of our, our time today will be a, a much longer time to break out and have discussions. So this is meeting each other, finding out where each other is from, but also with the goal of creating collaboration opportunities, get, generating ideas. Um, the bullets here are our interim science priorities for the Midwest CAC. Um, and I forgot to mention this, but the technical assessment is a tool we're using to inform our strategic science agenda that we hope to finalize this year. It'll be a five-year strategic science agenda. Um, so we really want to kind of get to dialogue space with everyone on this call. We've had a couple of introductory calls. We've had, um, you know, other topics about projects. But today we're hoping that we actually kind of start to touch and tenny with each other here. Um, at the end, we will have a little bit of time to come back together. So it won't just be um, kind of sending you off with your groups, but we will come back together and just talk about our next seminar. So with that. I will switch our screen so I can give you guys a rundown of the project solicitation, and then we'll kick it back to Sarah. So would you like me to just go ahead and share my screen, Jess? Yeah, Kristen, uh, if yeah. you're able to take okay. over. Mm -hmm. Not able to take over. Stop participant sharing. There we go. Great. So. Um, Thumbs up, everybody sees my slides, right? Oh, you see a little bit too of the little ribbon from Zoom. There we go. Great, so our Midwest Climate Adaptation Science Center is doing a solicitation for the fiscal year 23. And we, why do we do these solicitations? It's the number one way that we, in our region, uh, get to deliver science to help fish, wildlife, water, land, and people adapt to a changing climate. We really want to respond to high priority management challenges, foster substantive sustained engagement between scientists and managers, provide science to support sound resource management and adaptation, and advance the understanding of the impacts of climate change on fish, wildlife, water, and land. And so our solicitation is a really strong mechanism to do these things. And because we're going after these goals that are a lot more interactive, there are specific types of projects we look for in this solicitation. These include syntheses, impacts and assessments, design and evaluation of adaptation, and physical climate responses. Each of these categories is meant to dialogue, meant to address challenges that our land managers or other partners have, but need that strong scientific design and, um, and approach that those in this consortium can bring. So, so these are the bridge projects. 
these projects should prioritize climate as the primary driver of impacts to the fish, wildlife, lands, and water. And we especially welcome projects addressing federal or state trust resources. This is endangered species, migratory birds, or regional species in greatest conservation need. Um, this can also be species scheduled for review of protection status or economic or culturally important species um, in high priority conservation areas, public lands, and or tribal lands, ancestral lands, or ceded territory. And so we expect for these projects to articulate a clear connection to resource management concerns and how these projects can add value to decision-making processes. Hence, some of these categories of syntheses and responses, and especially that evaluation of things that may already be underway by our partners of, for climate adaptation, but we don't necessarily have good tools yet to see how they are moving the needle and how well they're going forward. So we also want to take a moment to say, all these things are what foster success for selection of your projects and success as a project. Having good communications and partnerships with our stakeholders, with our partners, those who are going to put the information on the ground that we are collecting through our research and through our projects. Those who want to be a part of exchanges, a lot of the projects in our portfolios do exchanges by uh, workshops through regular webinar dialogues, through advisory committees that are delineated at the start of the project. So it's really important in our um, task to start to create and carry forward uh, what we're doing here in these seminars, that collective community that is engaging and exchanging. Um, and is not sort of just kind of us pushing to the product and then maybe dropping it off. But um, I'm sure that a lot of the folks here are already excited about that kind of work. That's really why I think this group has come together in this way. So to get more specific, we are going to talk today about our interim science priorities in these five categories. But in the solicitation, we have talked to our advisory committee and asked for their input on what is most pressing right now. So there are 10 science priorities, and this is gonna be a lot, but uh, this is in the solicitation documents that you can get. Uh, 10 priorities that we've identified under sort of each of these five, not evenly distributed, right? So looking at this and considering our breakout groups later, this is where we're looking at this year for priorities. It is not an exhaustive list. It is not everything we can imagine. Nonetheless, it can help maybe shape you know, some of these early conversations. Yeah. I forgot to mention at the very beginning that tomorrow on Tuesday, the 28th at 2.30, we are having a more formal and in-depth uh, webinar about this, where we'll have dialogue, we'll have questions, uh, and we'll spend more time specifically on the solicitation. Today is more to generate ideas, to build connections. And so uh, there will be more information on this tomorrow in that webinar. And we will uh, have a follow-up email with that information in it. So now I'm going to transition from the, the why, the what, the exciting stuff to the nuts and bolts. There is a different structure uh, in the Midwest CAS solicitation, including an eligibility criteria that where only individuals from our consortium or USGS centers, field stations, labs, or cooperative research units are eligible to be the lead principal research investigator on a project. This does not preclude co-PIs who are not affiliated. So if you are in another institution that's not a member of the consortium, or USGS Center, you can serve as a co-PI on a project and receive funding as a sub-award from that organization. Similarly, if you have a project that is outside of the footprint of the Midwest CAS, and our portfolio currently does include projects that are not only in the Midwest CAS, but primarily that's our priority, uh, there are cross-CAS projects. And there can be projects that you apply to the Midwest CAS as a, as a lead PI and spread a little bit out, or you can apply to um, solicitations in other regions. Not every region this year has a solicitation, but where they exist, they will have the same eligibility structure as ours. So you will not be able to be a lead PI unless you are a member institution or a USGS center, but you can be a co-PI. 
And we do um, encourage folks to consider building those connections and um, you can submit multiple projects if you are a co-PI on others, as long as it's not the same project that you're submitting to multiple casts. We do invite um, for you to identify a lead cast to review your project, but you can denote uh, that you want other casts to review or where it might overlap. And so these, um, these regions are also in the solicitation documents and the ones that are this year doing a solicitation will be highlighted there. For our Midwest CAPS, we have one and a half million available this year. Individual project awards will not exceed 400,000 and the length of the project is not to exceed 24 months. The start dates are a little delayed um, from what, well, I'll just say the start dates are, <laughs> Uh, for USGS Center, it's 60 days after the budget is received by the USGS, so our USGS directors, when they finally have their budget, within 60 days, we'll be able to transfer funding and start those projects. Consortium members anticipate not before August of 23. And I dropped in here, but um, it will be in the documents and we can continue to provide in other venues. Uh, statements of interest and invited proposals, everything will be submitted through our PS manager, project solicitation manager, which is on science base, and that's the link there. So there are templates there for um, the solicitation, for the statements of interest, and there are FAQs there as well, I think, if not in the solicitation document. And so I've mentioned our research priorities. This is the timeline, statements of interest, are due July 21st. And so the way that this works is we invite statements of interest. There are no more than three pages. Um, and then they're reviewed before we invite full proposals, which will be lengthier, full, full, more fleshed out budget with a data management plan. Those will be invited by October 13th and expected to be turned around a little over a month. Um, oh, that has to be wrong. Yeah, that's like two weeks. Okay. I apologize for that. So I think they are invited mid-September with the deadline of October 27th. For sure, October 27th is the deadline for the full proposals. Um, it's the invitation date that's that's in. So um, tomorrow I will have that corrected on our, <laughs> our seminar. Uh, and finally, the selection of projects will occur over the winter. There's not a hard date for this because this is an interaction between um, the, the review process for the proposals and the federal budget being approved. It has to be a, a final full budget and not a continuing resolution or something for us to know the amount of money is available. To give you a little bit more details on the process, this is a figure that you'll find in the solicitation document. This is a figure for consortium participant where it goes through what I just went through, one statement of interest, two reviewing statement of interest, three full proposals, uh, invited, four full proposals reviewed, five notification of intent to award contingent upon budget and approval, and six is the new step, the host, University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, will submit your proposals through grants.gov. And this is because the funding process at that bottom line is through a cooperative agreement that CAS has with the host, University of Minnesota, who's, who delineate sub awards or distribute sub awards to the consortium members. So we're just, we want to highlight this because if you are not a host institution, you must coordinate with the host. So we invite you to reach out to the host to be aware of the pass-through costs that will be associated with administering your award. And there, if there are additional sub awards to other partners, they will, there may be overhead at those stages as well. So to be aware of that already at this um, initial stage for your statement of interest and your proposed budget. If you are a USGS applicant, this process is a little bit different because the funding mechanism will be a change of allocation uh, to your USGS center. And from there, if you have other, co if you have co-PIs who have sub-awards, you will administer those sub-awards and there may or may not be overhead um, affiliated with those. So I'm gonna stop there. This is kind of the quick overview. More to come tomorrow, June 28th to 2.30 PM today after Sarah gives us more on a technical assessment, let's dive into some of these um, cool ideas. Thanks. Take it away, Sarah. 
Hi, everyone. I'm going to um, just share my screen. And we'll begin shortly. So thumbs up if you can see my slides. Great, thanks, Jess. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the Midwest CASC's strategic science agenda, technical assessment. It's a lot of words I strung together. Um, so starting with the middle line, strategic science agenda, what is that? Um, this is a document of research priorities that will guide the Midwest CASC's work through 2026. Um, this includes identifying projects for research and research support and structuring activities and programming. In other words, the strategic science agenda helps to focus and define the CASC's work. And many of us are familiar with the interim version of this document. Today, I'm going to be discussing with you how we are using our collective expertise to inform this agenda. We refer to this refinement process as the technical assessment. So we currently have this interim strategic science agenda. Um, as I said, you're likely familiar with this document. I'm going to show a portion of it. So there are five larger areas. We are only, these are management challenges. And on this slide, I'm showing you the first management challenge, heavy precip and drought. And under each of these are a list of science priorities. So where did this document come from and where is it going? So in 2020, the Midwest CASC, which was then connected to the Northeast CASC, underwent a process to identify these priorities consisting of structured feedback from the advisory committee, listening sessions with practitioners, feedback from project partners, and a review of regional climate initiatives. This whole um, four-stage process really focused on um, practitioners more than anyone else. And the interim, science priorities that we are now familiar with are were based on this process. Um, structured around five management challenges, as we're familiar with now, I won't read them to you. And under each, they identified about 10 science priorities. So for a total of about a total of 51 for the CASC. So in the short term, as Kristen just mentioned, 10 of these 51 have been selected as the focus for the FY23 um, solicitation. But this is the interim list. And so what is the longer term plan outside of this FY23 solicitation? What happens next? How are we using the expertise of the Midwest CASC to inform our plans, not only through 2023, but through 2026? So to inform um, and update the science agenda, we are using uh, this technical assessment process to consult with university, state, tribal, and federal experts to do two things. One is to identify gaps in the interim plans and immediate and emerging research areas. And the second is to inform the prioritization of these research areas into the final strategic science agenda. So who is involved in this process? So there are several lists of specific names um, at the Institute on the Environment, um, at the University of Minnesota, at the host institution, we have myself, Alyssa Welch, the program manager, and Jessica Hellman, the director. At the USGS, we have Kristen, who we just heard from, as well as Olivia Ledee. Um, from the consortium lead leadership team, we have a four-person working group, Susan Galatowicz, Jeremy Guest, Tom Canote, and Ellen Pedersen. But most importantly, we have the experts that we are consulting with. And I want to say more about these experts in a moment. But first, I want to describe what the process looks like specifically. So in stage one, we are surveying experts about what are their ma the major research questions in climate adaptation for natural resource management in the Midwest, and asking them to look at the interim list and, and tell us what is missing. Stage two is an internal process where we will be collating the survey responses and then the USGS will be revising the interim list based on those collated stage one responses. And finally, in stage three, we will be hosting 
focus groups with experts who will then score this new list that is developed in stage two according to three criteria, the amount of uncertainty, the feasibility of addressing that science area, and the opportunity for impact were that science area to be addressed. So right now we're at stage one. Surveys went out a few weeks ago and will be closing soon in early July. I wanna make a pitch for those on this call to take the survey. Alyssa is gonna put the um, link in the chat. Um, and I wanna talk more about who is an expert and who the survey is intended for. So we are looking for people with expertise, experience and insights about climate impacts, adaptation and natural and cultural resources in the Midwest. I wanna be clear that we define expertise broadly. We especially wanna hear from those whose perspectives are often underrepresented in these assessments. If this sounds like you, please click the link and take the survey once we are done here. And if this sounds like someone you know, please send it to them. It'll take about 25 minutes to complete and getting a broad participation and perspectives in this is critical to finding where the cast is gonna be going into the future. So with that, I'll say thank you. My email address is there. And also for general inquiries, we have the new Midwest CASC email address. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing. Thanks, Sarah. Now we're gonna go into breakout groups for probably about 25 minutes. Um, as Kristen mentioned, we're gonna do a little brainstorming about project ideas based on uh, these different science priorities. Uh, there's no need to take notes in these discussions, um, but if burning questions pop up or there's things you do wanna share, um, we will come back to the big group for just a couple of minutes uh, before we wrap up the uh, seminar today. So uh, in just a minute, you are gonna see um, the breakout groups option pop up on your screen. Um, you'll be able to choose which room you want to go into. Each room will have a different science priority um, topic that you can, I mean, talk about whatever you'd like, but that'll be the topic for that breakout room. Um, please don't choose the one that says extra breakout. That's just kind of our overflow space if we happen to have a lot of people in one room and need to move people around. If you have any questions or don't know what to click or get lost in the Zoom void, feel free to chat me and I will help you out. Um, with that, oops, okay, hold on, click the wrong button. One second, it's hard to talk and do these at the same time. <laughs> okay, do you see the options on your screen? Can someone give me a thumbs up. We see a list of names right now, Jess. Let me get our recording going again here. Um, hope everybody had valuable discussions. Uh, we wanted to have a little time here. If there's any questions you wanted to share, um, you can feel free to drop them in the chat or you can go off mute um, or anything you that came up in your discussions that you wanna share with the big group. Um, we just have a few minutes to do that now. And Jess, I would I would say we were kind of hitting our stride in, in our group as well and going over some questions. If anyone had questions that did not get answered or kind of mid answer and need to follow up, um, I would encourage you to uh, tune, if, tune in if possible to the webinar tomorrow that Kristen referenced previously. Um, and Kristen, perhaps you can also drop your email into the chat if folks had specific questions that they wanted to follow up with you on. I will just observe that it was really fun to kind of spitball ideas with you all today on this breakout group. Um, and I, I hope that's part of the culture we keep creating here. Because uh, I don't know if I would have gotten that time with those individuals like outside of joining this call today. So. And just, this is uh, Jessica Hellman. I, for those of you who had conversations about, um, I know we had a, couple, a conversation about, well, is anyone else interested in dot, dot, dot? I would encourage folks to reach out to the key contacts of, if you're a consortium member, 
uh, there are individuals who are responsible for leading, for organizing your organization's connection to the consortium. And I would reach out to those people if you're seeking other folks across the consortium who might be working on similar work, because it's part of their responsibility to facilitate those interactions. So I know I have a couple of things that I'm going to be looking to my other consortium colleagues to say, hey, does anybody know anyone working on dot, dot, dot? because we could build some collaborative proposals. Now is the opportunity to ask those burning questions. If not, I'm gonna wrap us up here. So I'll give you a few more seconds. Raise your hand or pop it in the chat. All right, hearing nothing. Um, I just have a few reminders for folks before I let you all go. Um, the first one is, mark your calendars, our next science seminar in July will be on the 25th. Hope you all can join us there. We'll have more information out about that soon. Um, the second one is that we've recorded this meeting, as we mentioned earlier. Um, eventually, all these recordings will be archived and easily accessible on our website. But until we have a website, um, if you would like a copy of the recording of today's meeting, just let me know. I'm happy to share it with you directly. Um, I can pop my email in the chat as well. Real quick. Um, and then a couple other things. Um, just yet another reminder to join Kristen's webinar tomorrow if you want to learn more about the project solicitation process. Um, there'll be an email with the link to that and a little more information out this afternoon. Um, and then lastly is just a note that we have this new sign up page um, to receive both invitations and information about these seminars, but also just updates on the Midwest CASC, um, which is our work generally. Um, if you would like to share that, um, feel free to share this link with anyone who you think might be interested in um, just staying up to date on our work. I dropped it in the chat. Um, that's just the short bit.ly link, bit.ly slash Midwest Cask um, will get you to the MailChimp sign up page. Um, I think that's everything. Um, Kristen or anyone else, feel free to jump in uh, if I missed anything. Otherwise, I think we're done for today. Yeah, I just saw a chat question about the recording tomorrow. Tomorrow will be recorded. If you can't make it, send us an email. We'll, we'll get it out. We won't be necessarily like blasting that, I don't think. So it probably will be like a reach out and ask us for it. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jessica or Olivia. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, just email us if you miss it. All right. I think that's it. We're even a few minutes early. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>